Well, hello again, everyone. This is Bob Barton, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Dry Docks, and I'm here with uh, Logan. Logan. And uh, if you are watching this video, hopefully you're uh, interested in the wonderful world of remote controlled submarines, because that's uh, what we do here. You will not find any funny cat videos at all on this channel. Um, in this week's video, we are going to be showcasing our all new Virginia 3D printed kit, which is a take on Otto's kit. Uh, a lot of changes to make it more accessible, a lot easier to uh, work on and build. We are going to be talking about our big Nautilus build, 148 scale, that you can grab from our website if you want to. Going to give you a little tour of a really cool Stingray model from the Gary Anderson uh, series Stingray from the 1960s. And uh, got a bunch of boats for sale. Big uh, SSN 571, a Russian Beluga, a US Gato, and a very cool Sequest kit, all of which you'll be able to see here and then purchase. Uh, and then we're gonna finish things off talking about a really cool steampunk paint job slash kit bash that we're doing uh, for a friend here, Nathan, on his uh, former Marlin submarine. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get things started. We're started. <laughs> it's Monday morning and uh, we're getting ready to get things started. We just finished putting the boats away from last week. We, uh, as a reminder, we tested out Virginia, Virginia Typhoon, Typhoon the, G5. the G5, and I had the Lotus out there too. Oh, I forgot the Lotus. Yeah. Um, all of which did really, really good. Make sure you check out last week's video if you want uh, some footage of all of that stuff. We're going to get this week started uh, by tacking together the all new Virginia files. Uh, again, this is based off of uh, Otto Gerza's amazing files, but he does kind of a funky uh, remove front section, remove back section, slidey cylinder in the body thing. This is a more traditional L cut. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier to install waterproof compartments, watertight cylinders in here. So we're going to go ahead and tack this baby up. I'm going to show you how it's done. All right. This is where, this is probably the most important step in this uh, boat construction. And that is proper alignment of the upper hull and the lower hull when you're gluing everything together. Now, I think probably what will end up happening once I end up doing this differently, um, I merged parts together. Uh, in order to increase the size and, and do fewer parts, fewer seams. Um, but it just makes alignment a lot more challenging when you're putting it together. So, because Otto did some really cool things in terms of alignment pins and uh, the idea is you bolt them together. Uh, where I split it, you actually need to glue and, and uh, like fiberglass, which you should be doing anyway for strength for something like this. Um, but again, from an alignment perspective, the, the secret sauce here is to take each piece on a perfectly flat piece of, of uh, surface and sand everything smooth. So there's no ridges or anything like that. So you can perfectly align all the pieces. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to use thin CA, tack them together temporarily, and then they'll be together good enough so that Mr. Logan can uh, fiberglass them and make it an absolutely permanent bulletproof bond between everything. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the top because it's the easiest. As you can see, it's all nice and perfectly flush. And then we'll move on to the bottom hole. So here we are. That is, I'm, I am so excited about that. Um, I've, and bear in mind, this is just like rough now. I haven't, we haven't touched it with sandpaper or filler or anything like that. But note, this split is at the waterline. So now from a painting perspective, you just literally take the top off, do your scum line, you know, paint your top. There's no masking or anything like that, except a little bit on the bow and uh, a little bit on the upper rudder. So, but uh, this is basically the way that it's all going to work. And, and we're not going to mess with it here quite yet. But if you just carefully remove that lid, bud. 
um, all of the orientation pins uh, meet with an orientation pin in the upper so that all of this alignment is going to be absolutely perfect. But this is actually really rigid. Uh, again, it's, it's fiberglass reinforced ABS and there's some really thick, you know, like inbred bulkheads inside, embedded, not inbred. <laughs> um, we got the saddles for the cylinder. This is exactly where the cylinder is going to sit. Just right there. That, that is going to be really slick. I think this is going to be a quick build. Oh man, I've went and set it now. We'll see though. I got a new impeller that's on the printer. Speaking of which, we should go grab that, those parts off the printer. And then we can show them the, uh, the new control surfaces and the impeller, uh, or stator, sorry, the new stator. Yeah, I reprinted them in resin. These are good. Actually, the, the rudders look really good. These are going to be bulletproof. But we'll see. Whichever turns out better between the resin and the, and the, and the, and the ABS we'll end up using. But yeah, Logan will go grab that. And in the meantime, I'm going to tack the bulkheads for, for spacing. And uh, we'll be ready to set this aside for when we actually start working on it. I just wanted to get it tacked together so that we can you know, uh, store it without warping or, or anything like that. All right, let's take a look at the cool back end of this thing. This is my new stator. Now, I'm a little confused because when you put this in place, the shroud, um, the back of the impeller is completely flush with the back of this tail cone. This leads me to believe that perhaps, um, you know, Otto was envisioning of using this as the actual propeller. The issue is these uh, blades are curved, but they're curved in the wrong direction. They, uh, if this were to go forward, the, uh, the low pressure area would actually be inside. This would be terribly, terribly inefficient. Now I've gone ahead and glued this in I took the original stator file, this is a stator, uh, enlarged it and removed the shroud for it. So this is a perfect, perfect fit now. What I'm gonna do uh, inside this area here, which is completely open, I'm gonna put in a big five bladed propeller. Um, now this is an alpha prop obviously, but I'm gonna cut it off and we're gonna mount it uh, inside. So we need to remove whatever the hub thickness is from this area, uh, and then just mount our, uh, our bushing and everything, and then this should mate up to the impeller there, or the stator, sorry. And uh, then we'll have a, a shrouded pump, pump jet, proper pump jet uh, prop. And, this is a contra-rotating prop, and this is a clockwise uh, correcting stator. So we're going to have a vortex that goes this way, and then the stator going this way, and the two should, in theory, cancel each other out and uh, end up with a fairly linear flow of water coming out the back. We'll see. That's a really sharp angle on there. I don't know. We'll see. Worst case scenario, I can knock it out and not use it. But that's the idea. Uh, I might even just play around with this a little bit here this morning because it'll just take a minute to knock this, put a bushing in, uh, and get a, get a propeller in place. Are you going to start working on Nautilus? Actually, you know what we need to work on is orders. That's so exciting. Orders are so exciting. Okay, so Logan is going to get to work on orders, and uh, I am going to play with the uh, Virginia. But we need to stop. We need to pause and have a moment of silence for Pluto. Never forget, it was, I believe, this last Friday that Pluto was killed as a planet. The anniversary Never forget. Well, let's take a look at what we got going on here. I got a, uh, a little capper bulkhead thing that I installed after I sheared 
that off. And then a bronze oil impregnated bushing that goes inside there. This goes all the way back like that. And if you take a look inside, you can see the shafts are aligned with each other, which is always a good thing. This is sticking out, done intentionally. Um, the prop is mounted uh, through a combination of friction fit and then a uh, stainless steel set screw that's into a flat in the uh, 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 shaft. So what we're going to do now is do a little test fit. If I can, there we go. What does that look like? Oh yeah, baby. Nice and smooth. So, um, I might just try and find some bolts that'll that'll go in here. And the idea behind this, this is all completely removable for maintenance. So you undo these four bolts, the entire shroud comes off, and then you can pull the prop shaft out. Always build it so it can come apart, because it will absolutely, positively need to, 100% guaranteed for sure I might I might even put a, another bulkhead in here to make sure that this stays centered and smooth as butter yeah 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 that's what I'll do here we go this is where I'm gonna leave off today um, bulkhead has been installed we have an oil light bushing in there for the shaft to ride on now you'll notice i don't have a uh, a lockdown in there and i don't need one because the prop is pinned between the hull and the impeller so there's no way for it to move forward or back there's no way for the shaft to move forward and back so uh all i've got on there now which is actually pretty cool i like this thing uh is a big beefy nasty awesome dog bone and uh this just basically slips right in there locked down super spinny super free moving um we'll make sure that that gets oiled up and once we fire this thing up it'll break in and uh, should be nice and smooth but this is where we're going to leave off on uh, the uh the virginia project for the time being until we have a chance to work on it that'll be after the gato but i just wanted to make sure that all of y'all got to see um, this new version uh, of the Virginia. So for those of you that struggle a little bit with getting access to the interior via, you know, a big removable nose cone and a big removable tail cone, uh, and potentially another option out there for you. I like this. Uh, at the very least, it's going to make my build easy. So uh, hope you like it. Comment down below. What you think? Good? Not good? Let me know, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. It'll be fine. One more thing before I put Virginia away, I want to talk about what Ed and I alluded to in the vehicle about uh, rudder extensions. So let's take a look at the rudder situation on the back of this attack sub. So the one I'm particularly interested in is the lower rudder. Now I want you to take a look at this. It's the size of maybe two postage stamps. Um, it is not big at all considering the size of this crazy boat. So if we get this in here, which I'm gonna to try to do without looking, this is this is the situation we got going on here. Derp, 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 derp. And that's all that's turning this boat when it's on the surface. That's it. This little tiny baby rudder, little baby. Now you don't want to have it looking a little, you know, gawky when it's out on display. But when you operate the boat, you can cheat because nobody can see what's underneath. This is what we came up with. Now, this is a prototype. The walls are just a little thin. But this is the idea. Now we have a much, much bigger rudder. And uh, the whole idea, this is actually uh, magnetic. Um, of course, this rudder's not held in, so it's going to just come out when I pull on it. Um, but if we take a look, there's a magnet in the bottom and a magnet in the bottom. So when you drop this in, 
not only is it a pretty cool friction fit, but it magnetically holds it in place. So that difference, you know, from where it was to what this is, is tremendous. You're probably doubling the surface area of that lower rudder. So um, I am going to be implementing this in this build. We'll see what it does for turning distance. If you recall from our trip out to the pond last weekend with the uh, Virginia with stock rudders, that thing probably had a 30 foot turning diameter, you know, 30 foot circle to completely turn around, hoping this will knock it down quite a bit. We'll have to see. But uh, hopefully you like this cool little, you know, modification. And uh, now that you know how it's put together, you can implement this on any build that you have uh, that you want increased turning performance. All right, Logan is working on Nautilus. We're finally getting to it. We're going to get this thing done this week, one way or another. Um, in the meantime, I want to show you the new uh, uh, X14 twin and radios, which are going to be a new kind of entry level, but still ultra super powerful radio for RC submarines. So this is the, uh, the X14 twin. All of the, the, the switches, the dials, like all of that stuff is very comparable to the X18, X20. Uh, the only difference is this doesn't have an internal 900 megahertz uh, antenna. It's got a R9M Pro uh, that snaps in the back and that's how you get your 900 megahertz for subs. But the neat thing about this is uh, it runs not this, not yes, yes, Switch yes. Warning. Okay. It runs the same ethos operating system as the X18, the X20, the new X20 Pros, etc., etc. The only difference is uh, no touchscreen. But this radio is half the price. So basically, completely set up. Uh, I think the transmitter is like 188, the R9M is 50, and the receiver is like 35. So you've got a really economical package to power your boat. Um, and again, just amazing customization available. And you can share programs, you can back programs up. Uh, exceptionally powerful, and there's not much that you could dream of that this transmitter won't let you do for your submarine. Now that you looked at the radio, we get to dive into a customer repair scenario for their cylinder. This is going to be like the fourth time that this cylinder has been back here. Um, I'm going to say that this is very likely because the owner is uncomfortable in tearing the cylinder apart, and that is terrible. If you're an RC submarine owner, you need to be intimately familiar with your boat and very, very comfortable taking it apart and putting it back together again. That said, if you want to keep shipping stuff to me, I'll happily send an invoice every time but it's extremely expensive and bear in mind every time you ship it there's a high likelihood that ups is going to drop kick it off the back of the truck damage it and then you're really going to be in a rough scenario so all i know is that this cylinder flooded and is not working that's all i know let's tear into it and see what we got to work with oh man there is literally still water in this thing if it wasn't messed up before, it's going to be messed up now because this has had water, moisture, sitting in here for probably, whatever, a week or a week and a half, just rotting everything away. I got concerns about the receiver. If that receiver shot, then we have major problems. Look at that pump. Oh, yeah, yeah. Battery compartment looks okay. I think we might be all right. Let's crack into this thing and, oh man, the motor is completely, this is shipping damage. This is exactly what we were talking about. This motor is completely pulled apart from the mounting bracket and is not turning at all. I don't know what's going on there. There's probably a bolt shoved through it. Oh. This is super exciting. Just, I just love it. Yeah, I'm gonna be able to kind of see a ship to corpse. 
Well, we're going to crack it open, but I mean, if, if that list starts looking too big, then ultimately at the end of the day, we're talking replacement scenario. This is not good. This is an early Gen 1 watertight cylinder, which were super, actually pretty reliable, but uh, they just don't take nicely to uh, getting flooded out. Let's crack it open and see what we're dealing with. All right, we're apart. Um, I just, the first thing I did, I just plugged in the bow servo and it's completely dead. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's dead. It's not moving at all. Um, I am going to go ahead and, uh, I am going to guess that this is all, I, everything is going to need to be redone. This is what I'm most worried about though. Let's check these servos here real quick and see this, like they said, the motor is like, there's something jammed in it. It's not moving. And the bolts all pulled out. I, how do you, how does that even happen? How does the bolt get pulled out? I think, I think UPS drop kicked it and it jammed this and broke. I don't know. I don't know. One thing at a time. This, this is a combination of being flooded and very poor maintenance. There, there's no lubrication on here. They're completely seized into the bushings. So when I went to, you see the servos push themselves right out of the bulkhead because these are seized in place. Com oh man, they're completely locked and it pushed the seal out. So the servos are functional. I don't know how much I trust them now that they've been flooded. I'm gonna unbolt the motor see if I can figure out why that's locked up well this is what I was worried about the uh, receiver is shot so I'm gonna try and resuscitate it I'm gonna see if I can if I can massage it back into life again we're gonna show you what I do and if it works it works if not well there's nothing you can do about it yeah look 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 at the corrosion on the back there. Not good, people. All right, so, I mean, it looks much cleaner, doesn't it? I made, like, a little bit of progress. Like, if I, if I give power to this thing, we now, oh, of course now it's not doing it. Oh man, yeah. There's it's it. Oh, there we go. It, uh, you see that flashing green light? That's what you want to see. Um, I played around with connecting servos, um, but not nothing. There's. I actually did get channel one working momentarily, but there there is just a lot of corrosion on here. The, the pins on all of the servo connections, and they st you can still see them a little bit, uh, have corrosion on it. What that tells me is not only did this get wet, but it was left on, powered on, because it, all of the corrosion formed on the, on the positive pins of this. And that takes a while to do. So it, it sat in the water for, I don't know, or at least wet, powered on for uh, a really long time. Um, I power, I threw power on the pumps. The pumps are actually working, and they have really good suction through the uh, through the intake. I'll be snookered. The uh, speed controller is working. The reason the motor wasn't working is because I have a hunch it was never ever maintained. Uh, I think there was. Uh, the bushings, the bearings were, were seized up. I just, I just worked it, I lubricated it, and now it's completely fine. So there you go. Brushless motors in the wet. You can abuse them, and they'll just keep on ticking. So that's good. I, I don't know how much I would trust this, having been soaked once, but it is functional right now. The servos are functional right now. These linkages need to be completely 
maintained, lubricated. This is going to be fun. Like the, just the one pump is completely and utterly like, oh my God. But we'll try, we'll try firing up the 2IS, we'll throw some power at it and see what happens. Crazy. 2IS is not functional. Neither pump is working at all. So I can disconnect this, like try throwing power right on this and see if the pump spin, but like, oh my God. Yeah, just, just for fun, I slit the heat shrink. And uh, I mean, it, <laughs> I am amazed that this thing is still functional. That is, that is crazy. So definitely new speed controller required as well. Well, it's gonna be after Virginia and it's gonna be after the Gato, but we do have a very cool project coming up that some of you guys might be kind of interested in. Let's take a look. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is a Stingray. Jerry Anderson production from like the 60s, I think. A little before my time, a little before. Um, I don't know much about it. I'm gonna to need to do the researches to figure out how all of this works, but it's gonna be fun. Um, this was the kit put out by Beck's Model Marine out of the UK. And apparently, if I remember the whole story correctly, this was actually taken off of the filming miniature or something like that. So it's supposed to be really, really accurate. Now, that having been said, she's, she's a little bit rough. There's some corrective action that's going to need to happen on this to, to sharpen things up a little bit. But uh, shapes and forms are all there. And this hull is incredibly robust. Like, you could drop kick this off the roof of your house and it would be perfectly fine. Like, I'd say this is like 3 sixteenths thick fiberglass easily with that huge lip on the inside for reinforcement so you don't need to worry about warping at all ever <laughs> so i got to do some research put some reference material together figure out how this thing's all go together and then start figuring out what i'm going to do to make this thing actually work um this is a is a cast piece in clear resin I don't know about this. Look at the, the crackage going on in there. And it's, it's pretty heavy, too. What I might do is grab some uh, clear PETG and just draft this again. Uh, and then figure out how we're going to do this. Because I, I think in the show, this spun or something, didn't it? Tell me, tell me down below. Comment. Help me out here, people. I don't know nothing about this. Although I will. The other, the other cool thing that he sent was the entire DVD box set. 39 episodes on five DVDs. Which would be really helpful if uh, I owned a DVD player. Unfortunately, the uh, time of the DVD is long since past in this era of streaming. So we, I don't even think I own a computer with a CD-ROM drive to put it in so of dubious help to me but unfortunately there's a lot of resources available online um, so for now we're just gonna pack this baby up put it back and then uh, start making some some thoughts some thinkage about how we're gonna make this thing go Tuesday morning beautiful day the, the weather has been turning more reasonable here. It's not, it, it's instead of boiling hot, it's just, uh, boiling, boiling. Yeah. I just almost boiling. Um, we had a busy morning. We, uh, we just brought a literal vehicle full of, of stuff from the house to our storage bay, picked up some stuff, uh, in the back there. That's going to be coming back to the shop. 
and um, we're going to be heading back now to continue work on uh, on the Nautilus. But we got uh, we got some cool stuff that we got listed, or we're going to have listed, including a full Ravel Gato 72nd uh, uh, kit with the Merriman conversion kit with a brand new 250 series subdriver. So um, that's going to go out to my dive tribe buddies. They're going to get first crack at it for a day or two, and then it's going to go live on the website, so if it's still up on Friday when this uh, video drops, you can check it out, see if it's still there or not. Um, we also got a bunch of cool donations for Subfest. We got a little Sequest model, a little a little Sea View model. Um, that'll be going on the raffle table for uh, Subfest 2024. Remember, don't wait. It's the most epic RC submarine event you are ever gonna go to. Um, not just for people with submarines, this is for anybody with an interest in them. So hopefully we will see you there. Well, I'm glad you guys could join us. We got Jason back in because he's super interested to see how our new cylinders are going to do. We spent the last 30 minutes if that, yeah. doing some wiring. I'm going to show you how slick our revised wiring situation is going to be on the 200. 250 had the old school wiring, that's fine. But what we're really interested in is seeing how the ballast system is going to work. So let's see how it goes. All right, so we got everything bypassed here right now. We got a, a 2.4 gigahertz Wi Fi. Does everybody remember Wi Fi back in the day? Caswell imported these from China. Um, a little 2.4 gig receiver, that's a nice size. Yeah. I uh, got a little MM15 on there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, we got the intake hose in the, in the water. And in theory, we should be able to pump water in. We may need to prime it there the first time because it's a brand new pump, so. But let's see what happens. It should flow into the ballast chamber. We'll have to keep this level until it hits the intake. And then the intake's gonna pee out the uh, this hose, so we might want to just get that ready over there. All right, let's see what happens. Which way do we need to go? We got to prime it. Got to blow water in there. There you go. Oh, there you go. That's that's all the way through. All right, let's try this again. Oh, there! That's really... Whoa, look at that! That's some force, too. Wow, that's filling up pretty quick. Alright, keep this level. So it should go right till it hits the little notch, correct? Correct. And it'll, it'll keep going, it'll just force water out the intake there. Or out that air vent. Up and P. Yep. Okay. And we got some PP. So now we got an air pocket in there. So in theory, plug that off. And if I go the other way, that we should see this air bubble increase in size a little bit, even though you've got the intake plugged off. Oh, wrong way. Wrong way. Let's try going the other way. <laughs> There we go. Okay. I know what I'm doing. Plugged off. Okay. Oh, we got an air leak right here somewhere around this perimeter. Whoa! <laughs> Too much force. That pump has some serious <laughs> force. Too much force. Yeah, this isn't surprising because I ground all that down. Yeah. I'd probably ground the seal right off it. There we go, she's empty. So this little bit of water will always be in there then, right? Well, it'll be just like an OTW system. Like they'll, that you'll, if you tilt it forward and then drain the pump, right. that'll get most of the water out. Yeah. But now since this is primed, it should, oh yeah, there should always be water in there. Yeah, yeah. Kick on every time. Yep, 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 cool. yep, yep. Right on. That's what we wanted to hear. So it's a nice, you know, slick, clean system. The next step is going to be throwing it in a in the pool, right? In in a practical 
application. Um, we'll have to keep this end out of the water <laughs> so that we get signal. But let's take a quick look at this uh, at this 200 series. Man, is this ever clean? So the way that we did this, all of the servos and speed controllers can share power and ground uh, for the servo wires. And so we grouped them all together and color coded using these ribbon connectors all the way out. So now each wire is individually color coded and you'll never forget which one goes to what because you can just look on the other side. So now these will just plug right into the receiver which I've got to feel it underneath where the receiver is going to live. And uh, um, we just need to get power connector on the, on the back there or like an MM15 or something. But this is, this is tidy, man, like super cool. The speed controllers live right here next to the, next to the motor. Yeah, I think my favorite part is this color coding. Just be like, okay, what's red? Oh, that's a speed controller. Cool. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Yeah, I think that's going to help. That's going to be nice. A lot less room, so you're not going to have a headache trying to force all your wires through. Yes. It's all right. So Good stuff. I have to go into a meeting. So uh, that's all you're going to get. <laughs> well, it's dark outside, and I am in my airplane. I uh, got to fly up to Dallas. I'm going to meet Ed. I've got two boats that I took in trade for that awesome Russian G5. We're going to fly up there, grab them, wedge them in the plane, come home, hopefully be home about 10 o'clock. So we'll have at least a half a day's worth of work back in the shop. So let's get this day kicked off. Well, she strikes a pretty good silhouette. We made it. Uh, I beat Ed here. I told him it was going to be 8 and I got here at like 7.50. So I'm sure he's just around the corner. We'll uh, wait till he shows up here and then uh, get loaded up. I'm getting them to top up my tanks. And uh, we'll head home. It's going to be a short turn. Made it. And I got fuel going in the plane. But I want to show you a little sneak peek of what, of what Ed brought. So let's let's start with this guy because this was super cool. Beluga. Russian Beluga class in this is 96 I think, right? Yes. So she's a she's a baby. But uh it it's really really cool uh, with that those contra rotating props with the gearbox in there. This is going to get set up with a with a 2-inch easy driver, I think. Yeah. Is the plan. Although those saddles look like two and a half maybe whatever although this came from australia so maybe it's something like a 50 millimeter or something like that <laughs> so that is cool i'm i'm super excited about this guy i think we can get that wet quick way what was ended up being way too small for me yeah you could you could literally put it in your pocket if you had cargo shorts <laughs> and then what what is this monstrosity that is a the bore 148 scale USS Nautilus 571. SSN 571 from yeah. DeBoer models. Can't get them, can't find them. And all the all the appendages and stuff are inside or oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So all I have to say is it ain't no longer my issue, dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right safety straps are on now we need to fit this six and a half foot boat in a five foot plane <laughs> Catch us, <dude. laughs> they got the coolest planes out here at midway regional at least every time there's like super cool ones so 816 i'm loaded ready to head back <laughs> this was a quick turn <laughs> this includes refueling too 
I get to do my checklists. I love checklists because it means I can't do anything stupid uh, inadvertently for having forgotten something. So, I like how it actually says, make sure you close the door in case you forget to close it. All right. Hours are good, seat belts are good. My passengers know exactly what's going on, which is always good. Let's get that main switch on, our flaps up. Radio switches are off, make sure control is full forward. Actually, it's not gonna be because we're not gonna do normal starts, hot start. Hot start, don't need the boost pump, ICO ignition. All right, here we go. Clear prop. So we made it back to the bat cave, safe and sound. Uh, it was a beautiful day for flying. Um, I want to show you these two boats in depth because they're super cool. So this is the Nautilus. This is the uh, the SSN 571 uh, USS Nautilus, not to be confused with that Nautilus over there. Um, this is a kit by Dennis DeBoer, DeBoer Models. He is not manufacturing these anymore, so they are incredibly hard to come by. Uh, 48 scale, this thing is very sizable. So it's about 82 inches in overall length. And I'm gonna say, you know, probably seven inches in beam. There is lots of room here to do anything that you want. The stock parts that come from uh, Dennis, this is all this white cast part. You have all of your control horns uh, here, your rudders, your dive planes, and the uh, retracting forward dive planes. Now the mechanism for retraction isn't there, but all of these linkages uh, are included in it. All fiberglass, uh, fiberglass sail, and then you've got all of your, your uh, shaft tubes and everything embedded in these resin parts here as well as well as some really cool little anchors and uh, uh, hatches and that sort of a thing the other thing that comes with it and uh, i got photos of, of these all laid out these are the conversion parts from david merriman uh, that allow you to model it as she was launched and as she would have uh you know traversed the globe and went underneath the you know the arctic ice and everything so this is the the later version with the uh, what they call the arrowhead stern, which I, I kind of like myself. But this kit uh, is for sale. I'm going to put this up on the website here fairly shortly. So uh, if anyone is interested, check out the website. It's going to be up there uh, if it's not already sold to my dive tribe dudes. Um, the other thing that I got here is the little Beluga 96 scale. Now this was put together by a gentleman out of Australia. And this, uh, this paint job... Uh, is really really stellar I don't know that I can you know properly render that on video for you guys but it is absolutely museum quality very very cool and then of course the uh, the really cool thing is this contra rotating gearbox in the stern my idea is uh, we're gonna put a two inch easy driver in here so no ballast tank and it's not necessarily or only because it's a small boat but because of the size of the boat the perfect operating environment for this is going to be a swimming pool and with swimming pool being the case uh you know visibility really isn't uh going to be an issue and the difference between you know submerged trim and, su and surface trim is like half an inch in a boat this size um of course I could do it if I wanted to, but I don't. Uh, the operational characteristics of this boat are gonna be impeccable just with an easy driver and it is gonna be an absolute blast in a swimming pool or other clear water environment like the Springs in Cahutta at the upcoming Subfest. You got your tickets, right? This uh, is gonna get our brand new 
200 easy driver. Uh, the parts are already on the printer. I'm hoping to get this thing all knocked together before Subfest. So maybe I can bring her to Subfest. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I think I want to throw it up on the website as well as a completed model. Now, obviously, you're not going to see the completed model because it's not finished yet. But if you want to get your foot in the door and be the one to own it, uh, you can grab it online. So good luck. I'm excited about these, these boats. It is Thursday. It's going to be Thursday all day. We're supposed to get thunder showers. It was like sunny and raining at the same time a minute ago. Um, Logan is pounding out the, the Nautilus here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to play with a new lighting control module. Uh, try and get that rigged up so I can get all the lighting working on this. So it'll all be ready for when I get those parts from him. And then if I do that fast enough, I'll have some time to grab the Steampunk Marlin for Nathan. And we're going to see what we can do to Steampunkify it together. All right, my fancy uh, multiple channel switcher unit for uh, Nautilus is uh, wired up and ready for all the different circuits. And the way this is going to work is going to be uh, interior lights on and off, exterior lights on and off, attack lights on and off, and propeller on and off, all from the remote. It's going to be super cool. I used to do it with like switches, but that was a lot of wiring through the stand and then it had to sit there. So this is like stealth. I think it's going to be super cool. All right, that's done. We're going to put this over here and now I've got to go grab the steampunk Martin. All right, this is what we got to work with. And if there was ever a steampunky looking boat, it would be the Marlin here. There's all sorts of cool little hatches and slidey things and more hatches and sticky outy things and, and pipe looking things uh, everywhere and, and, and barrels and all sorts of cool stuff. So uh, we got Logan and I need to sit down and, and percolate on this for a minute and see what we can come up with for a really cool paint job and maybe just a few extra features, just a few to see what we can make it look like. The crew be back in the shop. What's up everybody? Uh, I'm fudging about with, with Steampunk Marlin, which we're, I gotta, I gotta run a name past Nathan because we got an idea for that. Um, Jason's working on a 200 Easy Driver. Getting there. For uh, a 77 scale Nautilus that got sold, so. I think it's going to work out really good. We're just going through some teething pains. <laughs> trial and error. Trial and error, figuring everything out. Make sure everything fits. And then Logan is trying to focus while I look over his shoulder. Well, I am doing the final touches on the wheelhouse. I'm trying to very carefully get the glued down without getting a bunch of wet boomers all over the floor because that would be but the, the wheelhouse is looking really cool. There we go. Okay. Theoretically, I can let go. Ha ha! Didn't fall over. We had a couple of fun instances where um, I keep wanting to make the faces look nice, and I kind of accidentally made one of them into Hitler, so we had to. <laughs> you had to correct him. <laughs> had to. Um, yeah, super cool. So once that's done, I can install that in here and move on to the next phases, next stages of the big Nautilus assembly. And then that'll give Logan some time to finish up the wheelhouse, wheelhouse walls, wheelhouse pipes, and all that stuff. Well, those are all done. Well, you got to install it, though. Oh, it's live. Well, make a video. Game. Yeah, exactly. So, progress. And this, I can hear you through the, the video camera. What did you do? It was such a beautiful boat. Don't care. Not your boat. We're making it better. We're making it better. Uh, this is just the base coat. Uh, so we're going to be we're going to be detailing it out and highlighting it and low lighting it. Um, I salvaged a piece from a Ravel Type 7 as for a uh, splash guard for the tower here. So that's going to work really good. And I think we're going to put a ram 
on the front. Maybe some kind of secondary RAM up here. Whatever we think looks cool. But most of this is going to come from paint. Uh, we're also going to put some portholes all down the side to make that look really cool. I'm excited. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to work really good. And uh, Nathan's little dude works really good in the, in the sale there. So I got to do some 3D draftifying. And uh, then we can start sticking more parts on. So I ended up distracted with like a hundred things that were going on. People were calling me left, right, and center, and I forgot if I was making videos or not making videos, and I didn't make any videos. Well, not a lot of videos. Um, Logan did an awesome job on the uh, wheelhouse. That's basically all done right now, so I can attack that tomorrow. Um, but what I focused on, and really eh, just a couple of hours, two hours and 15 minutes. Let's take a look. Here we go. This is, this is the new Steampunk Marlin. I kind of want to see if, if Nathan, what we can call it, either the Swordfish or the Narwhal. Got a little spear ram action going on. And now it's going to get more weathering. This is just all I managed to get done today. But um, I think it turned out really cool. We did, who, who knows where this came from? Anybody, anybody know? Put in the comments. See if you're right. Um, but it was kit bashed a little bit. We, we put some greeblies on there to make it look cool. Um, still may do uh, a little bit of a wash. And I want to print some cool name pl plaques for this big open area in the front. So I'll get with Nathan and we'll find out if a narwhal or swordfish or, or the tin minnow or whatever. Um, but it's coming along really good. I'm going to paint the prop yet too. Um, and uh, Logan did the captain, and that captain, holy, look at that. That is awesome. And he gets to sit right here. Look at that. So, I am going to pack up the shop. I've still got... At least a couple of hours of consult work to do for my other company and I got a bunch of people wanting emails and invoices and all that stuff so that's what I'm gonna be off to do tomorrow's gonna be like almost the last day we're gonna have to work on Labor Day I think in order to keep up with this because we leave on Tuesday forgotten for the sub X uh, uh, event there and we're gonna have an awesome epic video that is gonna go along with that so stay tuned for that next week all right, it's Friday. We are getting ready to wrap this week up, but we got lots to do today. Um, Nathan is going to be coming this weekend to grab his boat, which has officially been christened the Narwhal. Let's take a look at uh, where we're at, because Logan is knocking out some cool stuff with it. All right, what do we got going on here? I am finishing off the signature Narwhal horn and adding kind of small detail work, small little like instances of silver and aluminum and gold so that it doesn't kind of seem a little one tone. Yeah, I love, I love how this turned out. That dry brushing turned out really good. So I'm gonna do some like weathering, some streaking and stuff like that once Logan finishes up. Uh, I think we're just gonna do the sacrificial anodes back here a little different color but i think we're getting pretty close eh? i think so and we were going to do a secondary ram too weren't we yeah i mean considering it's called the narwhal i'm a little on the fence about it but i do love uh the signature or not, maybe not the signature but the u-shape that forms when you have a secondary ram and you get this nice like curvature yeah we'll see we'll percolate on it I do, I do kind of like the single horn, honestly. It's very narwhal-ish. Mm -hmm. That and uh, Logan knocked out the uh, wheelhouse. So the wheelhouse is basically done. Um, we need to do the windows for it, mask them, and then uh, we can glue the wheelhouse together and then put the wheelhouse on the boat and then do all of the lighting. So 
we're getting real close on that too. But more than anything else, we need to get ready for our epic road trip next week. Um, we've got two boats to pack up that are going to customers. I got my own boat that needs to get prepped uh, and ready to go. I think the only one I'm gonna be able to bring is Lotus because it's just so travel sized for your convenience. Um, just a little suitcase and then uh, I'll have at least a boat to run in Groton. Got a lot of people I'm looking forward to meeting there and Logan's gonna be coming with me. Yep, nice week and change long adventure across the states. You know, I never checked. I'm gonna need to get with Ray and make sure you get on the guest list. Oh yeah, that might help. Yeah, because it's uh, it's on the military base and you gotta have prior approval to get in there. So I will look after that immediately right now. <laughs> Just stand at the gate staring inside. <laughs> yeah, well, you'd be hanging out for a day. Well, not that we're gonna be spending a lot of time there. You'd be hanging out at the hotel room for a day. Okay. Well, that's it for another week. We got the, the narwhal basically all done. We got all the wheelhouse all set up, uh, ready for installation there next week. Uh, it did get a little bit of, of additional weathering done on the side, got some little streakage going on, just subtle. This is a, a fairly fresh from the dry dock boat. Um, I think it turned out super cool though. Yeah, I love it. The only thing we've got left to do now are uh, to install some little name plaques on the on the front so uh i guess with that um special edition of the dry docks video next week uh epic road trip logan and i are going to be hitting the road driving from texas all the way up to connecticut and back mm -hmm. hope you have a good audiobook you guys have a, a great rest of your day and uh, as always we'll catch you next time